A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to Hindu Newspaper Analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 26th of July 2022. And displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss today. And without any delay, let's get into the article discussion. Today, we are going to start our discussion with this front page article. See, this article states that Madam Traubadi Murmu took the oath of office as the 15th President of India yesterday. She said that the post of President is not her personal achievement, but it is the achievement of every poor person in India. And in this context, we are going to discuss some of the provisions related to President office. We are going to discuss about eligibility criteria, oath and vacancies related to President office. See, in India, to be eligible for election as president, a person should meet certain conditions. Now, what are they? Firstly, he or she should be a citizen of India. Secondly, he or she should have completed 35 years of age. Note here, upper age limit is not mentioned. It is just given as they should have completed 35 years of age. So, in prelims, if a statement is asked like, the person contesting the election for the president office should not be over 65 years, then it is a wrong statement. Why is that? Because upper age limit is not given. Now coming to third eligibility criteria, the person should be qualified for election as a member of Lok Sabha. That is, the person should meet the qualification of MP of Lok Sabha. And finally, a person to be elected as president should not hold any office of profit. Know that the word office of profit has not been defined in the constitution or the representation of people act of 1951. See, office of profit has been interpreted by courts from time to time. Basically, it is a position that brings to the office holder some financial gain or some benefit. And with this, we have finished seeing the eligibility criteria for president office. Now, let's move on to see about the oath. See, before entering upon the office, the president has to make and subscribe to an oath or affirmation. The oath of office to the president is administered by Chief Justice of India. If Chief Justice is absent on that particular day, the senior most judge of the Supreme Court will administer the oath. Now, coming to the vacancies, see, a vacancy in the president's office can occur in many ways. Firstly, the vacancy may be created on the expiry of his tenure of 5 years. Now, secondly, the vacancy may be created by his resignation. It may occur on his removal by the process of impeachment or it may be created by his death. Finally, the vacancy may be created when he becomes disqualified to hold office or when his election is declared void. Note that when the vacancy is going to be caused by the expiration of the term of the sitting president, an election to fill the vacancy must be held before the expiration of the term. But in case of any delay in conducting the election, the outgoing president continues to hold the office until his successor assumes charge. Now in this case, he continues to hold office beyond his term of five years. This is provided by the constitution in order to prevent an Interregnum. And in this situation, the vice president will not act as president or discharge the functions of the president. Now, apart from this, if the office falls vacant by resignation, removal or death, then the election to fill the vacancy should be held within six months from the date of occurrence of vacancy. The newly elected president remains in office for a full term of five years from the date he assumes charge. In this case, the vice president can act as president until a new president is elected. And also, when the sitting president is unable to discharge his functions due to absence or illness, then also the vice president can discharge his functions until the president resumes his office. So that's all about this article discussion. See, in 2023 prelims, you may expect question regarding president election. So be thorough with the provisions related to president office. Now, with these learned points in mind, let us move on to the next article discussion. Now, for our next discussion, we are going to take this editorial article. See, it is a lead editorial article. And this article is about evolving new global order in the world arena. Today, I am going to try something new. Instead of discussing and displaying the practice mains question at the end, what I am going to do is, I will first display the practice question and I will discuss the article. And side by side, I will also tell you how to use the points in the editorial in your mains answer. 
Now before starting the discussion I want to share something with you once in a while you come across a very rich lead editorial and this editorial today is like that see most of the time after reading the lead editorial I'll be able to extract only two or three points in total now you may ask a question a lead editorial will be around 1000 to 1100 words how come only three points can be extracted from it see it is a reasonable question see through the author's command over English they'll be able to write a whole essay with just three points but today's article is rich in every sense it is easy to understand and it is also easy to comprehend see this lead editorial is written by MK Narayanan and look at his profile he is a former IPS officer a former director intelligence bureau former national security advisor and former governor of West Bengal no wonder he wrote such an article right see your GS answers must be like today's lead article it must be crisp to the point and must be substantiated with examples so after listening to the discussion go read the today's article then you will understand what I'm trying to convey now enough about this let us get into the discussion see I have displayed the main question here let me read it out in the recently concluded G7 summit the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said a time of uncertainty lies ahead of us we cannot foresee how it will end illustrate here the keyword is illustrate illustrate means to explain something with examples so for this question what you have to do you must prove mr. Olaf Scholz statement with the example that is you must substantiate with the example that the world is heading towards uncertain times see since this is an illustrate type question you cannot take the opposing viewpoint you must support the statement with examples first of all let us look at the introduction for introduction you can write about the evolving global order how the world was unipolar at the height of the British Empire and it turned bipolar with US on one side and USSR on the other side after the World War one and then again it turned unipolar after the collapse of the USSR and finally in the recent times the world order is going through a shift after the emergence of China and this will be an apt introduction now coming to the illustrate part first of all let us take the changes taking place in Europe we are going to cover it geographically first of all we are taking Europe currently the political environment in Europe is quite turbulent to stabilize it a leader who is strong is required for the past several years the politics of Europe was guided by Germany which was headed by Angela Merkel the current German Chancellor Mr. Olaf Scholz lacks the foreign policy experience of Miss Merkel and not just Germany the United Kingdom is also currently in a political crisis since Mr. Johnson lost the majority in the lower house see the only European leader with good experience as far as the foreign policy is concerned is the French president Mr. Emmanuel Macron but he too will not be able to act independently as the opposition has secured a majority in the French National Assembly so basically Europe is a rudderless boat heading into troubled waters now next is that there is an economic crisis looming in Europe see inflation it is at an all-time high the cost of energy food and fertilizers have skyrocketed this has taken a hit on the foreign exchange reserves of various countries so many European countries are economically unsound we saw before that as far as the foreign policy is concerned Europe is heading towards troubled waters now from this point it is clear that economically also uncertainty is there in Europe now finally the major event that is unfolding in Europe is the Russia Ukraine conflict see the conflict even after six months has not produced any results the Western powers economic sanctions have not resulted in desired outcome the conflict only increased the economic worries of Europe as the many European nations depended on Russian gas see as the conflict is still undecided and multiple dimensions each day the power structure in Europe will undergo a major reshuffle in the coming days so these are the evidence of uncertainty in Europe now let us come to the Eastern Hemisphere here firstly let us look at the evolving Russia China relationship the Russia Ukraine conflict and the Western sanctions they brought Russia and China together 
the current friendship of china and russia reminds us of the close sino soviet relationship of the 1950s this relationship between russia and china is born out of necessity so what is the necessity here see european countries they are trying to isolate russia and the us it is trying to contain china through its various initiatives like quad aukus and the partners in blue pacific here partners in blue pacific is an informal mechanism and cooperation between the us uk australia new zealand and japan so from this we can infer that the pressure on both sides has brought the two countries that is russia and china together now how the russia china relationship will evolve in the coming years would be an interesting thing to witness so this is about russia china relationship now let us take the west asia see the relationships between west asian countries have always been a tangled web the situation there is only getting more complicated here the conflict between saudi arabia and qatar and then the normalization of relationship between israel and uae after the 2020 abraham accords are the recent developments and the next major change that is taking place is the weakening of us middle east relationship after mr biden came to power while this is happening on one side the russia iran and the china iran relationship are growing stronger the western powers they are trying to isolate iran and this have pushed it closer to china and russia so here also the situation is evolving having seen the global politics now let us turn our focus on india see the foreign policy of india is also undergoing major change and is getting towards the uncertain future here firstly let us take russia india china relationship india has considered russia to be its all weather friend see india though it has not endorsed the russian actions in ukraine it has also not condemned it india has also started using rupee ruble route to import oil from russia this is on one side on the other hand russia and china are also getting closer as we saw earlier china is mainly focused on exerting its dominance in asia and sidelining india china is also trying to establish a new world order and dismantle the us from its position so how india is going to handle russia on one side and china on the other side is still undecided india is also concerned about whether russia will remain as its trusted friend even after its growing closeness with china so the evolution in this aspect is also uncertain next is with respect to relation with afghanistan see with taliban coming to power in afghanistan how india will engage with afghanistan is still not clear in this case india must soon accept the reality and start the engagement process soon now the next one is relationship with respect to growing uncertainty in Sri Lanka we all know Sri Lanka is undergoing both economic crisis and political crisis so how india will engage with the new government in sri lanka is still not clear only thing that india must ensure while engaging with sri lanka is that actions of india does not result in the emergence of an anti india atmosphere in sri lanka now the next is india's engagement with the middle east here india has enjoyed historically good relations with iran but due to the pressure by us the relationship has now deteriorated on the other hand india is enjoying fruitful relation with israel and uae now see the recent i2u2 initiative comprising of india israel the us and the uae is a positive development some see i2u2 as a counter to iran's influence in the region here the uncertainty is how india is going to balance the relationship between iran and israel with iran it had good ties historically but with israel it is enjoying good relations currently so how india is going to balance these two is still not clear and here also the geopolitical relations are evolving so these are the various evidences from all around the world and some evidences involving india that says that what lies ahead of us is uncertain so this is how your answer should be and everything must be substantiated with examples now lastly in the conclusion part maybe you can take the opposing view here you can state that even though the situation is evolving the super power status of the us is undeniable with its resilient economy and strong military 
So even though there is some uncertainty presently, everything will come back to normalcy very soon and global order will be maintained. And that is all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw how to take points from the editorial article and use it in your mains answer. And I hope this session was useful. Now with these learned points, let us move on to the next article discussion. See this next news article here. It states that a black buck poaching racket has been busted. And five were arrested including a priest who was running the racket. In this context, let us see about black buck from prelims perspective. The black buck is an antelope found mainly in India and Nepal. In earlier times, the distribution of this animal extended all over India except for western coast. But presently, its distribution is restricted to Rajasthan, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and other areas of peninsular India. Now, with this information, let us see about its physical characteristics. Black buck is covered with dark brown or black fur. The chest, belly, eyes and chin are covered in white fur. The fur of male black bucks are darker than the female ones and the male black buck also have prominent spiraling horns. The females also have horns but they are not ringed or spiraled. In addition to this, the females are much smaller than their male counterparts. And the next important thing about the black buck is that they basically have strong eyesight and they are also fast runners. So using both of these abilities, they are able to escape from their predators. Now coming to its habitat, being a herbivorous animal, the black bucks live in open grasslands. They also live in dry scrub areas, thinly forested areas. They are generally seen in the area where there are good sources of water throughout the year. They prefer to live in thinly forested areas because only in thinly forested areas they can run away from their predators. They also cannot handle low temperatures. So, they do not inhabit colder regions like Himalayan ranges. Moving further, let us look at its social structure and lifestyle. See, black bucks are social animals meaning they live in groups. The black bucks live in herds that include 5 to 50 individuals. The herd of black bucks consists of an adult male and numerous females with their young ones. In the cooler season, the black bucks are diurnal, while during the hot season, they spend most of their day resting in shady areas. And in hot season, they will be active mainly in the morning and late afternoon. See, the black bucks by nature, they are very cautious and shy animals. Now having seen the social structure, let us see the conservation status which is very important from prelims perspective. See earlier, the black buck was listed as vulnerable according to IUCN. But due to conservation efforts, the population of black buck in the wild has increased. So in the year 2017, the black buck was reclassified as least concern as per IUCN red list. And in the case of Wildlife Protection Act 1972, they are placed under Schedule 1 and in sites, they are placed in Appendix 3. One more additional information. See, the black buck is the state animal of Andhra Pradesh, Haryana and Punjab. Now, with these points in mind, let us move on to the next article discussion. For our final discussion, we are going to take this image here. This image is with reference to Agumbe in Shivamoga district of Karnataka. See, Western Ghats, it is one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And Agumbe is known as the Chirapunji of the South due to large amounts of rainfall in the region. Now, taking this as an opportunity, we will revise about UNESCO World Heritage Site from Prelims perspective. See, World Heritage Site is a site or place inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List. We all know about the expansion of UNESCO, right? It is United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. So it maintains a list known as the World Heritage List and in that list only World Heritage Sites are inscribed. See, World Heritage Site is nothing but a location with an outstanding universal value. These sites are with distinctive cultural facets such as geological formations, physical, biological and cultural landscapes. It provides a framework for international cooperation in preserving and protecting cultural treasures and natural areas throughout the world. See, there are three types of sites. It includes cultural, natural 
and mixed sites. Now let's see them one by one. Cultural heritage sites include hundreds of historic buildings, town sites, important archaeological sites and monumental sculpture or painting. Now coming to the second category, to be classified as natural heritage site, the site should furnish outstanding examples of earth's record of life or its geologic process or it should provide excellent examples of ongoing ecological and biological evolutionary process or it should contain natural phenomena that are rare, unique, superlative or of outstanding beauty or it must furnish habitats of rare or endangered animals or plants or otherwise the sites should have exceptional biodiversity. So these are the criteria required for a site to be classified as natural heritage site. Now coming to the last category mixed heritage site. See as the name suggests the sites contain elements of both natural and cultural significance. Now these are the three classifications under the World Heritage Site list. Know that the ratio of cultural to natural sites on the World Heritage list is roughly 3 is to 1. And also know that several new sites are added to the list at the middle of each year. Now coming to India specific information, you have to know that there are 40 World Heritage Sites located in India. These include 32 cultural sites, 7 natural sites and 1 mixed criteria site. I have provided the list here. Just go through it. Now that's all for this article discussion. Now with these points in mind, let us quickly recap what all we saw today. Firstly, we saw about important provisions related to the office of president. In that discussion, we saw about the eligibility criteria required for the election of president. We saw that the person who is contesting the election should be a citizen of India. He or she should have completed 35 years of age and qualified for the election of member of Lok Sabha and they should not hold any office of profit under the government. We also saw that office of profit has not been defined in constitution or the representation of people act of 1951. And after that we saw about the oath of office to the president. See. The oath of office to the president is administered by Chief Justice of India. And in the absence of Chief Justice of India, the senior most judge of Supreme Court will administer the oath. And after that, we moved on to see about the vacancies regarding the president's office. Vacancy is created by expiry of the term, which is five years. It is also created by resignation. It may occur because of removal by the process of impeachment. It can be created by death or it can be created when the person becomes disqualified to hold the office of the president or when the election is declared void. And after that, we saw the situations where the vice president can act as the president. In the case of expiration of the term of the sitting president, the outgoing president continues to hold office until the next president assumes charge. In this case, vice president will not act as president. But in cases of resignation, removal or death, the election should be held within six months and here vice president can act as president until a new president is elected. And also know that the newly elected president remains in office for a full term of five years. And after this article discussion, we moved on to see about the editorial. It is about evolving global order. For the introduction, we saw the world was unipolar at the height of British Empire and after that it turned bipolar with US on one side and USSR on the other side after the World War One, and again it turned unipolar after the collapse of USSR. And in the recent times the world order is going through a shift after the emergence of China. And we moved on to see about the evidences regarding the uncertainty in world order. Firstly we saw about Europe. See Europe politics was guided by Germany and Germany was headed by Angela Merkel. But now the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz lacks the foreign policy experience. The other problem is that United Kingdom is facing a political crisis because Mr. Johnson lost majority in the lower house. And the last hope is the French President Emmanuel Macron but he also will not be able to act independently because the opposition has secured a majority in French National Assembly. And this is the concern regarding foreign policy. Now coming to the economic crisis, inflation is at an all-time high in Europe. The cost of energy, food and fertilizers are increased 
and this confirms that Europe is economically unsound. And the another major event that is unfolding in Europe is the Russian-Ukraine conflict. This also adds to the economic worries of Europe because most of the European countries are dependent on Russian gas. So these are the evidences of uncertainty in Europe. And after that, we saw about the Russia-China relationship. See, the Russia-Ukraine conflict and the Western sanctions brought Russia and China together. And this closeness is because of two things. See, European countries, they are trying to isolate Russia. And US, it is trying to contain China through its various initiatives like Quad, AUKUS and Partners in Blue Pacific. So this pressure led to a close relationship between Russia and China. And after that, we saw about West Asia. Here, two major recent developments have happened. One is the conflict between Saudi Arabia and Qatar. And the next one is the normalization of relationship between Israel and UAE after the 2020 Abraham Accords. And apart from this, another major change is the weakening of US and the Middle East relationship. See, US, it is having a bad relationship with Iran. And the Western powers, they are trying to isolate Iran and this has pushed Iran closer to China and Russia. And after this, we moved on to see about the uncertainties regarding India. We saw about Indian foreign policy. The first one is with respect to India, Russia and China relationship. India is considering Russia to be its all-weather friend. We saw that it has started using rupee-ruble route to import oil from Russia. On the other hand, China it is focused on exerting dominance in Asia and sidelining India. And it wants to establish a new world order and dismantle the US from its position. And earlier we saw Russia and China, they are getting closer. So there is uncertainty in how India is going to balance Russia on one side and China on the other side. The next aspect is with respect to Afghanistan. See, Taliban has come to power in Afghanistan and India has to accept the reality and start the engagement process soon. And after this, we moved on to see about the Sri Lanka. We all know Sri Lanka is going through economic crisis and political crisis. Here, India should engage with Sri Lanka, but it should not result in an emergence of anti-India atmosphere in Sri Lanka. So here also, India should be very careful. And after Sri Lanka, we saw about the Middle East. Here, India enjoyed good relations with Iran historically. But now it is having fruitful relationship with Israel. It is evident through the recent I2U2 initiative which comprises of India, Israel, US and UAE. So here also it is not very clear how India is going to balance between Israel and Iran. So these are all the evidences for uncertainties all over the world and in Indian foreign policy. And after this, we concluded by saying that the superpower status of US is undeniable with its resilient economy and strong military. And even though there is uncertainty now, everything will come back to normalcy and the global order will be maintained. And after this editorial discussion, we moved on to see about black buck. See, it is an antelope found mainly in India and Nepal. Earlier, the distribution was all over India except for the western coast. But now it is restricted to Rajasthan, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and other areas of peninsular India. And after this, we moved on to see about the physical characteristics. We saw that black buck is covered with dark brown or black fur. The fur of male, they are darker than the female and the males have prominent spiraling horns. Generally, females are smaller than their male counterparts. They have strong eyesight. They are fast runners. And using this ability, they escape from the predators. And after that, we saw about habitat. They live in open grasslands, dry scrub areas, thinly forested areas. And they prefer areas where sources of water are available throughout the year. They cannot handle low temperatures, so they do not inhabit colder regions like Himalayan ranges. And after this, we moved on to see about the social structure and lifestyle. See, these animals, they are social animals, meaning they live in groups. They live in herds, which includes 5 to 50 individuals. A herd consists of one adult male and numerous females with young ones. And we also saw that during cooler season, the black bucks are diurnal, that is, they are active during the day. But during hot season, 
they spend most of the day resting in shady areas they are active in the morning and in the late afternoon in general they are very cautious and shy animals and finally we ended this discussion by seeing the conservation status initially it was listed as vulnerable as per iucn red list but after conservation efforts in the year 2017 it was reclassified as least concern as per the wildlife protection act 1972 they are placed under schedule 1 and in sites they are placed in appendix 3 we also saw that black buck is the state animal of andhra pradesh haryana and punjab and after this we moved on to see the final article which is about the unesco world heritage site See it is a place inscribed on UNESCO World Heritage list. World Heritage site is a location with an outstanding universal value. It may have distinct features such as geological formations, physical, biological and cultural landscapes. And after that we saw there are three types of sites. One is cultural. It includes historic buildings, town sites, important archaeological sites and monumental sculpture or painting. The next category is natural site it includes examples of earth's record of life or its geological processes it includes examples of ongoing ecological and biological evolutionary process and it may contain natural phenomena that are rare unique superlative or of outstanding beauty it may include habitats for rare or endangered animals or plants or it may be sites of exceptional biodiversity And the third category is mixed heritage site which contains both natural and cultural significance. And we saw about India specific information also. There are 40 world heritage sites located in India. Out of them 32 are cultural sites, 7 are natural sites and 1 is a mixed criteria site. Now with these key takeaway points, let us move on to the next part of the discussion that is the practice prelims question discussion. Today we have three prelims questions. I'll solve two of them and one of them is a quiz question for you. Now let us solve this first question. Consider the following statements with reference to precedent. Statement 1: The impeachment resolution of president should be passed by a majority of total membership of the house and a majority of 2/3 of the members present in voting. See this statement is incorrect. Then what is the majority needed for impeachment resolution of the president? it is the majority of 2/3 of the total membership of the house the majority given in statement 1 is special majority so it is incorrect now coming to statement 2 if the vacancy is created in president's office due to resignation removal or death then the chief justice of india acts as the president see the statement is also incorrect if the office of president falls vacant by resignation removal or death then the election to fill the vacancy should be held within 6 months from the date of occurrence of vacancy and in this case the vice president act as the president until a new president is elected so both of the statements are incorrect question has asked for the correct statement so the correct answer here is option d neither one nor two now moving on to the second question consider the following statements about rani benur black buck sanctuary statement 1 This sanctuary is located in Telangana and statement 2 the sanctuary has dense evergreen forest see statement 1 it is incorrect because the sanctuary is located in Karnataka now statement 2 this is also incorrect because it has very less dense forest it mainly consists of open scrubland type vegetation see in our discussion we saw right black bucks they generally live in thinly forested areas So from that itself you can come to the conclusion that the second statement is incorrect. So what is the correct answer to this question? The correct answer is option D, neither one nor two. Now coming to third question, consider the following statements regarding UNESCO World Heritage Sites. It is a three statement question and this is the quiz question for you. Now read the statements carefully, think about it and post your answer in the comment section. I have displayed a mains question here. We saw this question during editorial article discussion so interested aspirants write it and post it in the comment section and if you have any queries related to the articles that we discussed today post that also in the comment section and with this we have come to the end if you find the video useful like share and comment and do subscribe to shankar as academy's youtube channel for further updates thank you